Thank you for the, the nice introduction and uh, the invite to, to come uh, share some of our work. Just by show of hands, how many people have ever felt pain when you remove a medical tape or a bandage from your skin? Okay. Um, so you can see, I think, that this is a major problem, and, and in particular, this is a major problem for neonates, which, which we're gonna, uh, I'm going to discuss today. And I also wanted to first just by, first start by um, sharing with you that the lead author on this work, Brian Wallach, uh, who's a, a postdoc in my lab and also co-mentored by Bob Langer at MIT, uh, received the Technology Review uh, 35 award uh, that was just, uh, he, he just received last week at the MTech conference. Uh, it's a very prestigious award. It's essentially the top 35 innovators in the world under the age of 35. And so we're really proud of, of, of Brian for uh, um, for the work and, and for uh, receiving this award. So I thought I'd just start off by giving you some perspective on how this project began. And um, about three or four years ago, the Institute for Pediatric Innovation, um, which is a nonprofit group here in Boston, uh, did a needs assessment in neonate units and hospitals across the United States. And so this essentially is where premature babies are cared for uh, during the early stages of life. And uh, they talked to doctors, they talked to nurses, and they asked, you know, what's the biggest problems that you encounter on a daily basis in these units? And what they found was at the top of their list, the biggest unmet need, the biggest challenge, um, was medical tapes. And um, these tapes that are constantly being applied to uh, neonates, are, when they are removed, they induce significant damage. And so um, premature babies are literally wrapped in these tapes for a variety of reasons. These are to affix devices to the skin. Um, so here we see temperature probes that have um, been placed on the ankle, and you can see some of the damage um, to the ankle. This can cause uh, a permanent damage and affect uh, mobility uh, of these kids. Um, EKG leads to monitor the heart rate, and then uh, endotracheal tubes, which are used to uh, maintain the airway. And so these are constantly not only being the babies being wrapped in the tape, but they're constantly needed to be changed. And so when they're changed, it can induce significant um, damage. And this is an example of, of some of the damage that can be done by a removal of these EKG leads. Um, and uh, it's estimated that there's about 1.5 million um, patients per year in the US that are, are uh, receive damage to their skin uh, due to a removal of adhesive tape. And I think uh, the premature babies are really the ones who are, are most uh, affected. So the current technologies, if you look into the neonate units, there's, there's a variety of tapes that are used. Uh, a couple uh, in particular um, uh, focus on plastic tape or paper tape. Uh, and, and I think the real um, problem here is that these are tapes that have been designed for adult skin. And I think this is kind of a common, um, what we see, see in many instances in medicine is where something is designed for adults, where you have the most number of patients. Um, but then when you look at, at kids, and in particular um, neonate units, there's really not a huge market to develop improved products. And so the tendency is to just um, force the technologies that have been developed on adults um, to these, these kids. And clearly, this creates a lot of problems. And so there has been some work, um, not much, but some work to try to develop new uh, medical tapes. And this is mainly focused on changing the adhesiveness of the tapes to the skin. And so the idea is if you could dial down how sticky these tapes are, um, then you can remove them a lot more easily. Um, and, and so it, it actually does work in terms of reducing damage to the skin. The problem is that this design does not allow for the devices to be secured to the skin. And so these tubes are constantly being tugged on. The babies are moving around. Um, and so, so these, this, this kind of design actually fails in its ability to secure devices to the skin. And so um, starting this project, um, we, we were uh, interested in, in putting together a design criteria. And this is something that we do for all projects in my lab when we're starting out. And, and really, what, what are the top kind of attributes of the solution that we could envision if we could develop the ideal solution? And so one is we want to maximize adhesion to, for device fixation. We don't want these tubes or devices to be able to come off. Um, we want to. Um, 
minimize the stress on the skin when these are removed and hopefully induce no damage at all and no pain. Uh, we want to make sure that, because there's lots of ideas that we can come up with, um, some may be too complicated um, or too costly, and so these would never be translated. We want to make sure that any solution we came up with would be able to get to the clinic very quickly. Um, so we wanted to make sure it was cost effective and scalable, that you could make you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of these um, uh, very quickly. And one of the things that we thought about was the adhesive layer in traditional tapes actually works pretty well to secure the devices to the skin. And so, and, and if we were to develop a new adhesive, it may have to undergo a substantial amount of testing to make sure that it wasn't toxic, especially on these neonates. And so one of the key design criteria that we implemented was to maintain the adhesive um, the same as, as the, the adhesive that, that's used currently on these tapes, as it, it is quite effective to keep the, uh, the tube secured to the skin. And these adhesives have been tested in neonates and, and demonstrated to be non-toxic and, and, and safe. Um, at least the adhesive component contacting the skin doesn't induce toxicity. Um, and we also felt that if we did this, uh, it would potentially lower the regulatory hurdles um, to get this into the, the clinic because we're not introducing anything, anything uh, new at that interface. So then once we put together these, uh, des this design criteria, we wanted to take a close look at the problem. And so uh, traditional tapes include two components. So it's the backing layer, which you see, and this is traditionally paper or plastic. Um, and then you have the adhesive um, sticky component. And this is what, so the backing is really what provides the strength of the tape. It's a strong material and it's able to um, uh, remain in place uh, and, and really not be deformed too much. And the adhesive is essentially taking this strong backing layer and making sure that it sticks to the skin. Um, the adhesive material tends to be very weak. It's just a glue, um, uh, but it provides an essential function to glue the backing onto the skin. And so um, when you go to remove a tape, a medical tape from the skin for adult skin, um, breakage occurs or the fra fracture zone um, in between the adhesive skin interface. So the backing never really tears. It'd be very rare for that to happen. Um, and so what typically happens is, is because adult skin is, is quite robust, mechanically robust, it's strong, when you go to remove a tape, you end up um, uh, having breakage occur within that adhesive, and that's why you end up getting adhesive left on your skin. So I think most people could probably relate to when you have a bandage on for a few days and you go to remove it, there's still some glue that remains, and that's because part of it is remaining on the backing layer and part of it remains on your skin because it, that, that's the weakest point um, is in that adhesive. However, the challenge with neonate skin is that the most fragile part is not the adhesive. It's actually their skin. They don't have a mature epidermis that is formed, which is the outer layer of the skin. And so when you go to remove it, you do have some residual adhesive remain, um, but most of the breakage will occur actually in the skin, and this is why the damage is, is induced. So we asked the question, um, could we transition the point of fracture or the breakage point away from the adhesive skin interface? And so we conceived of an idea where we would take a traditional two-layer adhesive and make it into a three-layer adhesive um, by introducing this intermediate layer. And what the intermediate layer would do, by engineering this intermediate layer, we could um, transition that breakage zone from the adhesive into this intermediate layer. And thereby, if we could do that, when we go to pull and remove this um, tape, we'd be able to completely separate the backing um, from the adhesive and leave the adhesive entirely on the skin. Um, now, as I showed before, typically you do get adhesive that remains and it takes several days in order to slough off and, and it's deemed safe to leave adhesive on the skin. Um, What's nice about this type of an approach is that if you can envision a tube is under this adhesive, when you remove the backing, this adhesive is very weak. So you can just simply remove the tube um, without inducing any damage. <clears throat> and so uh, in the context of, of uh, just to show this visually, um, if we have a tube and we affix our tape, uh, and then we're able to remove the backing from the underlying adhesive um, without inducing damage, and we make it very easy to do so in peel. Um, we leave the adhesive completely on the um, skin. It also coats the tube, but because it's so weak, we can then just simply remove the, uh, the tube. 
What we also found, um, which we thought was quite interesting, is when we leave a thick, continuous layer of adhesive on the skin, it actually becomes very easy to remove. And so unlike when you have a bandage on, a, on the skin for a long time and you remove it and you have all these islands of adhesive that remain, it's really challenging to, to get those off. And you tend to have to scrub really hard to, to get that adhesive off. What we found is that if you have a continuous layer of this adhesive that remains, um, you can easily just roll it off the skin and it rolls off um, completely with, with very minimal force. And so um, in considering, you know, how might we engineer this intermediate layer, because that's really going to be the focus of our design, um, we, we, we had to come up with a, a couple cr uh, critical points of control. So one is we wanted it to be strong enough to secure a device. We didn't want the backing to just fall off of the underlying adhesive, um, but we also wanted it to be weak enough so that we could separate it very quickly with minimal force. And so um, we came up with this idea by often what we, we like to do in my laboratory is look to nature for inspiration, as I think evolution is the best problem solver. Um, and so we started looking at various uh, creatures in nature, various materials in nature. And we started to think that um, creating an anisotropic interface between the backing and the adhesive layer um, might be a, a potential solution. And that, what that means is that um, the material would have different properties on, depending on how you pull on that material. So for example, um, mica is a multi-laminate or multi-layer material um, where you have uh, all of these layers that are bonded together and they have very high shear resistance. So if you take one of these layers and you pull in the direction of the material, if you're holding it in your hand and you're pulling on it, um, those layers don't come off. They're very strongly secured in the shear direction. However, if you pull at a slight angle, what happens is, is that you can pull one layer off at a time um, and it's very easy to do so. So it has very weak interactions um, in the peel direction, but very strong interactions in the shear direction. And so we started to think, well, maybe we could use this as a concept for our intermediate layer. And then we were also inspired by um, any time you have, let's say you get a bandage, uh, a Band-Aid uh, from the drugstore and you go to put it on a, a cut or some uh, abrasion on your skin, um, these are always coated with uh, a piece of paper. So the sticky part's always coated with paper. And this paper has this anti-adhesive layer on it, which is called release liner. And then you remove these pieces of paper to expose the adhesive, um, and then you could that'll attach to your skin. And we, so we started thinking, well, maybe we can include this um, as part of that intermediate layer. And so what we decided to do, um, because this is completely anti-adhesive, um, we were able to develop an approach where we took just the backing layer, so backing could be plastic or paper, um, and instead of just putting the adhesive directly on that, we coated we coated it with this release liner. So this is going to be completely anti-adhesive. And we had to bake it in order to get it to integrate into the backing. But now we have a backing, which looks like a standard backing. But, but on the part that faces towards the skin, which is this part here, we have a very, very thin layer of this release liner, which is anti-adhesive. And then to that, we were able to apply um, the, ad, the, um, the adhesive, which is an acrylic adhesive, the exact same adhesive that's used in, in current medical tapes. And so we were also inspired by some creatures in nature, such as spiders. Um, spider webs actually have regions of adhesiveness uh, and anti-adhesiveness, or regions that are sticky and non-sticky. And so the spider will actually walk on the regions that are not sticky, whereas the prey get captured in the sticky regions. So this is kind of an example of, of some um, patterning of adhesive and non-adhesive domains that exist in nature. And then geckos, um, we've previously been inspired by geckos, their ability to adhere to surfaces, vertical surfaces by a single toe. And they have this hierarchical structure on the surface of their toes um, that's essentially patterned. It ends up in these nano pillars. And it's estimated that geckos have in the order of about 1 billion of these nano pillars uh, on the surface of their toes for a single gecko. And so we've previously developed some um, gecko-inspired adhesives for internal procedures. Um, but we were inspired by um, a patterning that occurs in nature, and in particular, patterning of adhesive and non-adhesive or anti-adhesive domains. 
And so what we thought is, is that maybe what we could do, because if we just have release liner, it, it's not going to interact strongly enough, so the backing will just fall off of that, of that adhesive. So it would be very easy to peel off, um, but it's not going to be able to secure devices very well. So what we thought is, is what if we pattern that release liner? If we were able to etch away some of that release liner, and we use very specific, we use a, a laser um, that's focused just at the surface, we'd be able to expose some of the underlying backing material, which can strongly interact with the adhesive. And so that's exactly what we did, is we coated, so the bottom here is the backing layer. We have the anti-adhesive release liner, um, which is silicone-based, coated entirely on it. So this material is anti-adhesive. And then we use a laser just at the surface to remove very small amounts of that release liner, exposing the backing, which will then strongly interact um, with the adhesive. So we're able now to control in this intermediate region um, the interactions with that backing layer. And so just to show you an example, um, it's a little bit um, washed out here, but what you can see is that when we look in a region here that wasn't laser etched in green, we see a high silicone peak. The silicone's part of the release liner. When we look in a region here that's been etched, and this is showing the backing material, material we see the silicone peak is way down, um, almost non-existent. And so this is just showing that we were able to tune the laser to just ablate um, that interface and remove selectively some of that release liner. And so this is what the tape looked like um, when we had finished, where we had made these uh, uh, pattern designs. Uh, and what you can see here is that if we, we pull the tape, we're peeling it here, it just peels completely away um, from this underlying um, adhesive. So you can see the adhesive being left um, on, this, on the substrate. In this case, it was glass. And then so for an example, um, what we did is we spent quite a bit of time trying to understand the interaction of that patterning. So we looked at surface area of exposed backing and all sorts of different pattern geometries, and we came up with an optimized um, uh, pattern where we had adhesive and anti-adhesive domains. And so as a potential example, because we can't just go in and use this immediately on the neonates, we have to get approval from the Institute Review Boards, and that takes some time, we thought it'd be good to set up a model in the lab to try to mimic the fragile skin. Uh, of these neonates. And so what we chose was origami paper. Um, so those of you who have worked with origami paper, you'll know it's very um, delicate. And so if you put tape on it and you remove it, uh, it just tears really, really easily. And we thought that would be a pretty good model for um, mimicking the neonate skin. So what we did is we took the conventional paper tapes that exist in neonate units, conventional plastic tapes, and our quick release tape, uh, and then we peeled them from the surface. And so here you see um, the, the uh, uh, conventional tapes are tearing the origami uh, paper very easily, whereas um, our quick release tape completely leaves the uh, adhesive behind without any damage. Um, and I have a video here uh, to show you. I just need to, um, to come over here to set that up. And so this is just a video where here we're pulling on the uh, um, conventional tape, and there's our quick release tape. You see we're pulling really fast, really hard, um, and there's absolutely no damage that's induced um, from the quick release tape compared to the conventional tapes. And um, <clears throat> so then what we wanted to do is we wanted to um, uh, you know, just try to try to go back and show you some of the optimization we did for that patterning. Um, we had we did a number of different tests. Um, one example was a, a peel resistance test at 90 degrees. So these are our standard tests that are done. Um, and what happens is is that when you start to peel, um, you end up getting this maximum peel force. So that's just to start the peeling process. Um, and then what happens if you continue to peel, um, you end up getting this peel force that levels out, and we consider that the average peel force. So there's two peaks, so there's two regions. One is the maximum when you just start peeling, because um, you have to exert a certain force to just get it to start moving. And then once it keeps moving, if you have long tapes, because some of these tapes are you know, across their entire body, these neonates, um, we end up having an average peel force. And so maximum peel force correlates with the potential damage um, during the initiation of removal, and then the average peel force is a measure of the potential damage over long, long peels. And Brian, this is a picture of Brian um, testing some of the, these adhesives um, on his arm. So that was the one example of, of a, uh, um, uh, some, some human testing we did, but that was, that was really it. 
so looking at, at some of the data, um, so just to show you and orient you, we have here the average peel force uh, and the maximum peel force here on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we have the fraction, fraction of the backing material that's exposed. So in this case here, when we have no anti-adhesive layer whatsoever, so this is just the backing, like the traditional tapes, we end up getting um, very high um, average peel forces and very high maximum peel forces. The other extreme is where we have fully coated and released liner. So this is all anti-adhesive material that's contacting the adhesive. And when we go to remove, we almost have zero um, peel force and close to a zero maximum peel force. And this is showing how we have different patterns. So when we expose different um, amounts of that backing, so we have the um, anti-adhesive and the adhesive domains, you can see that we can actually uh, control the amount of force required to peel this off the skin, off the, um, up the adhesive layer. We also wanted to um, uh, not just do these peel tests, but we wanted to simulate conditions in the neonate unit where we're actually affixing devices to the skin. And so we immobilize, um, we use uh, endotracheal tubes, the same tubes that are used in these units, um, and we simply um, placed our tape onto these tubes and then we removed it um, from the surface by pulling on the tube. So this is actually simulating um, whether you know, if the tube got yanked, would it remain in place? And so here's an example of the conventional tape um, where we, we place this on the, um, on the tube. We then pull the tube away, uh, and you can see it um, break at this point. Uh, and here's an example of our uh, quick release tape where we have um, the adhesive plus the pattern backing. Uh, we then remove the, um, the backing layer. So if we don't remove the backing layer, we actually end up getting about the same force, the same holding force as the conventional material. Um, but then if we quickly remove that backing layer, just leaving the remaining adhesive, um, the amount of force required to remove the tube is really, really low. So this is just kind of showing a proof of concept that um, it works to secure the device, but then we can remove it with very minimal force. And then we also, um, quantified this further, um, uh, comparing to uh, commercial medical tapes. And so here's our tape, here's some of the commercial medical tapes. We used an adhesive um, that exists in traditional um, bandages, but it's a little bit more aggressive than uh, the standard um, uh, uh, tapes that are being used, uh, the paper and the plastic tapes. So you can see some uh, a little bit higher level of uh, adhesion, so it could really secure these devices. But then when we remove the um, backing, we see the, uh, the interaction is, is much less, much less force required. And this is the material that is the kind of state-of-the-art um, neonatal bandage that's currently used that doesn't really fix the device well um, to the skin. You see it has, exhibits very minimal um, holding force. In addition to this, so in addition to having a tube being pulled directly in the plane of, let's say, the arm or the skin, we wanted to ask the question, well, what if you pull on the tube differently? Because these tubes can be pulled on in all sorts of different ways. So what if we pull, we exhibit kind of like a peel where we're pulling the tube directly away from um, the surface at 90 degrees? What might the um, performance look like? And so we were able to show when we have the adhesive um, with the pattern backing, we don't remove the backing here. We have um, very good holding force, um, a little bit higher than standard um, tapes, but then when we remove our backing, we can significantly reduce that force um, and potentially reduce the damage to the, the skin. And then finally, um, what we were able to show is that in addition to just rolling that adhesive off the skin, um, we also thought there may be scenarios where you can't do that. The skin's just so fragile, you can't push on that adhesive at all. Can we detackify that adhesive that remains until it sloughs off the skin? And so what we were able to do is take that adhesive, um, we coated it with talcum powder, so just put a little bit of talcum powder on, just baby powder, um, and we were able to completely de deactivate um, the adhesive so it wouldn't be able to stick to clothing or fabric or pillowcases or bedding. Um, and we were here, we, what we were also able to show is that we could reapply an adhesive to that detackified um, adhesive that remained, and it stuck just as strongly as, as if there wasn't the initial uh, adhesive there. So just to summarize, um, We've developed this quick release medical tape, um, which really has a triple adhesive functionality. Um, it resists um, the uh, shear pulling on these tubes. Uh, it resists peel. Uh, and then also we have this um, really simple way to decouple this interaction so we can 
remove the backing layer um, from the underlying adhesive. We can then quickly remove the tube without inducing any damage or pain, um, and then we can remove the, uh, the remaining adhesive or at least detackify it. So at this time, I just I wanted to acknowledge um, Brian, who was uh, the lead author on this work, um, uh, my um, collaborator, Robert Langer, and some of the others um, that were involved. This was also done in consultation with uh, Children's Mercy Hospital. Um, so we interacted with uh, a doctor and a nurse um, in the neonate unit, and they were re very helpful to describe to us what are their traditional um, tapes that are being used, and they sent us examples of these. Um, and they're really excited about the, um, this quick release tape and really can't wait uh, to use it. Uh, and the money for this um, project was, uh, came from Philips. Uh, they have a division called Children's Medical Ventures, um, and, and so they provided the, a, uh, the, fun, um, the, the funds for us to, uh, to conduct this work. So I'd like to thank you for your attention, and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you.